Hi, this is Mr. Ward, and uh, we're going to take a look at Geometry Do Now 15.1. And uh, whenever you see this thing that says, read me, read me, read me, you should read it because it might help you with the questions. So I'll go over it. Triangles can be proven congruent if all three sides are congruent. We call that side, side, side. Or if two angles in the side between them are congruent. We call that side, angle, side. Um, and the side in between them is called the included side, okay? Uh, and then uh, also, if two angles and this angle between them, the included angle, are congruent, then the two triangles can be proven to be congruent, okay? And if that is true, if, all, if two triangles can be proven to be congruent, then all parts, all corresponding parts, are also congruent, okay? And I need to correct that there, uh, but it's Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, not congruent parts. Okay, so I will fix that. At any rate, we have a couple of questions here. So first, prove it. Uh, you can do a paragraph or two column proof. You will need the reflexive property for that. And remind you, reflexive property is the one that says things are congruent to themselves. So let's look at what we've got. Uh, so our conclusion, we need to prove that HG is congruent to KJ. Okay, those are segments that we need to prove. We know that angle HGJ, HGJ, and we'll mark this up, angle HGJ is congruent to angle KJG. We also know that angle KGH, KG, I'm sorry, KGJ, we know this, is congruent to angle HJG. Okay, so we've got a couple angles, a couple angles, and then what can we say about this side between them? Well, this side between them is congruent to itself. Okay, so after we've done the givens, okay, after the givens, we can use the reflexive Party to prove that GJ is congruent to JG, which is the same dang thing. <clears throat> now we have two angles and an included side. So we can prove triangle. H, G, J is congruent to triangle, okay? I said H, G, J, so it matters, so what order? H, G, J, so the other one would be K, J, G, K, J, G. Uh, so I named it by the corresponding sides. Um, I... So we're proving it by angle, side, angle, okay? And now, because of that, by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, kappa, kappa, kappa we can prove that HG is congruent to KJ. Those segments are congruent because they are corresponding parts of congruent, congruent triangles. All right, next one, we've got uh, the, we need to be re reminded to remember what a trisector means. So we know that T and R trisect SW. <clears throat> we know that, uh, and let's start with that information. We, we can just mark this. If that is trisected, then all three of those sides are congruent. Okay, wiggly last one. We know that XS is congruent to uh, XW, so let's mark that too, okay? That's congruent to that. <clears throat> if I didn't have color coding, I'd probably use two marks. And we know that angle S is congruent to angle W. So angle S, it's in unambiguous, which one is angle S, is congruent to angle W. Okay, we want to prove that XT is congruent to XR. 
xt is congruent to xr. Okay, <clears throat> so we have a side that's congruent. We have an angle in, and a side that's congruent. Okay, and because of that, we can use side angle side. Okay, so <clears throat> by definition of trisection, um, ST, TR, and WR are congruent. We have been given that S, uh, XS and XW are congruent, as well as angle S and angle W. So those are all congruent. <clears throat> so by side, angle, side, we have side, included angle, and side. Uh, by side, angle, side, we can prove that triangle, triangles, um, we'll call it S, X, T, and that's not an X, S, X, T, and W, X, T, and X, R, I mean, are congruent. And by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, we can prove that um, XT and XR are congruent because they are part of these two triangles that are congruent. So we use this. So we can prove that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. Okay, and that will allow us to prove that this side is congruent to this side because all parts, all corresponding parts of congruent tri triangles are congruent. Uh, we could also have, by the way, proven that this, there's another path to this. Uh, you could also have proven that this triangle is congruent to this triangle, and it would have led you to the same conclusion. Both would work. Okay, takes a few more steps to prove that one, but it's totally legit to approach it that way. <clears throat> you would have to involve um, the multiplication principle uh, to say that these, or addition principle, that uh, this segment and this segment are congruent because they are sums of congruent parts. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Uh, we have, we are supposed to prove that, oftentimes it's good to look at the what you're trying to prove. We're supposed to prove that KM is congruent to RS. So that's the segment that we are trying to figure out. Are these two congruent? Okay, I'm just gonna leave that there. So we know M is congruent to R. So I'll color code that, so angle M is congruent to angle R. We've been given that. We know that angle RPS is congruent to angle MOK. So we'll mark that too. Angle RPS is angle and MOK are supposed to be congruent. We also have been told MP is congruent to RO. Okay, that's only gonna be the tricky part. <clears throat> We have been told that MP is congruent to RO, okay? So we're told those pieces are congruent. And I know I've covered up some letters, so that's an, let me see here. That's an O there, and that was a P. Okay, so now let's see what we can do. Um, we want, to, we need to prove so we, we need to prove this side and this side are congruent, right? We know this angle and this angle are congruent. What would help is if we could figure out the side in between them. Okay, well, we know this longer segment is congruent to this longer segment. And this short segment and this short segment are both the difference if you take away this bit here. So after the givens, we can prove that RP 
is congruent to MO by subtraction. Since we could subtract the same segment, PO, from two larger congruent segments and get a congruent difference. Okay, now we have, now we have um, angle, side, angle, because we can prove that this angle and the included side between these two angles, these two angles and this included side, the one in between them, are congruent with this angle and this angle and the included side there as well. So now we have angle side angle. Uh, so we know that triangle uh, KMO is congruent to triangle SRP. Okay, and by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, we can prove that KM is congruent to RS. And there you have it. I hope that is help, uh, was helpful, and I'm going to stop the video.